How's it going, YouTube? Coming to you today with another video. And today, guys, what the video is a complete guide to Despia. Now, this is probably one of the most requested videos I've ever seen on this channel, and rightfully so. We're getting branded fusion in March or April when the structure deck drops, and this card is easily one of the most broken things I've ever seen. Now, Aluber did get left out of the structure deck, unfortunately, because you know, money card, but branded fusion is so insane. The fact that you don't even have a harsh restriction on this card, it does lock you into fusions, but you're only summoning fusions in this deck anyway, so who cares? This is so insane because you can just like shut all fusion monsters out of your deck and it doesn't like hurt you at all. You can just keep extending with the monsters that you get. Um, the amount of pressure and power that this card just applies to other decks is just insanity. We're going to be showing this off today in some replays. We're going to be talking about a couple of my lists today, especially one that's like ban list ready in case they ban a certain couple cards that we'll be talking about later on. We're going to be talking about my personal list and what I use and basically all the interactions in the deck and what each individual card does. If you guys are not already subbed, feel free to go ahead and click the subscribe button. At 8,000 subscribers, we're giving away a complete striker core, which you can see on my community tab. Um, I'm very excited to give that away and give somebody else the pleasure of playing striker. Uh, I know that not everyone has the means of picking up cards, so being able to give away in this season especially is a really cool thing for me. So I'm really glad that you are all here and that I can actually start giving back to you all as a community too, because I do appreciate each and every one of you. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into what the Despia cards do. So we're going to start off with a Luber here. Now, Luber is going to be searching you any branded spell or trap, which is just insane, first of all, because you can add fusion and wow, you know, like that, that's insane. Um, second of all, you can only use one effect of a Luber per turn. Um, the other effect of a Luber, which is actually really cool and... Fusion's always had a problem with like losing out on materials, right? Because you need like a poly and two monsters typically. So like you just need more monsters if you want to keep fusioning. Well, if your opponent kills your monster that's a fusion by battle or like clears it by card effect, like yesterday I got Zeus. The Aluber will then just summon back to the field. They had to do this as like a hard like one effect per because you would just be able to summon it and search like a branded fusion on summon, which would be insane. Um, but getting the body back alone is insane too, right? Because like, it's just another thing to fuse with. Um, so I really do like this as well. Um, and the fact that it like this card itself also can just like target a monster when it's brought back like Rose, um, or like Rose doesn't target, but you guys get what I'm saying. Um, it would just go ahead and negate a monster effect, um, which is super crazy. Um, I really do like this card though because of the fact that you just get the ability to search your branded fusion You can get into your opening to trigger other cards in your hand You can get into your theater or your branded in red to go ahead and keep fusioning um, It's just honestly the best thing that the deck has to offer um, But so there's a couple things that I want to talk about here, too So not only is branded fusion one of the most broken things that we've seen in a very long time We also have cards like branded opening down here, which does not discard for cost you can go ahead and discard a card from your hand and then special summon a Despia from your deck. So then you can go ahead and special summon your Aluber and search your fusion. But the cards that you can send off of your branded fusion being like your Tragedy, your Shadal Beast, your Squamata, like there's so many things you can just send off of it to just gain you so much advantage, right? Then you have Branded in Red, which allows you to add a Despia from your grave to your hand and then Fusion Summon, which again is self-replacing materials. And all these cards, for the most part, float, um, which is something that we've really wanted to see from a Fusion deck for a long time. And then we have Theater as well, which is really cool, um, that allows you to go ahead and Fusion Summon. Um, I believe, too, this one allows you if a Fairy leaves the field by your opponent as well, um, you can go ahead and Special Summon a Fusion from your uh, Graveyard. Granted that the Fairy that left the field was a non-Fusion, so essentially your Aluber, your Tragedy, um, what have you, any of your Despia monsters, right, uh, for the most part, because they're all Fairies. Um, so I do like all these cards. They all have really cool secondary effects. Um, they really do just put in a lot of work here. So the next thing I want to talk about is tragedy. So this is going to be your monster searcher here, which is really cool. The most common way to resolve this is going to be going ahead and discarding this off of the branded opening or banishing it off of the gold sark. Um, if this card is sent to the grave or banished by a card effect, you can add a despia monster, um, which is really cool. Um, the other thing too is that you can banish this from your grave and then reset a branded spell or trap. So again, just a really good recurability. Um, you can only use one of these effects per turn. Again, it is a hard one or the other, um, but that's perfectly fine because like you net so much advantage off of these cards. 
Um, you're typically only searching the Aluber or the Dramaturge. You don't really want to play the other ones. The other cards like Comedy and like the uh, the level 8, I believe, um, they're just not really that good. And they don't really like progress what you're trying to do, um, nor do they really have that many relevant effects. Um, so I personally don't play those. I would rather just play these three because they're just the best ones that you have access to. Um, the Dramaturge is really cool because it's a free summon and negation. So if you use it from your hand or field and it gets sent to the grave or banished um, as fusion material, you can just summon it back to the board for free, which is crazy. If a fusion synchro exceed or link monster is special summon, except during the damage step, you can target an effect monster on the field and negate its effects, which is really crazy because this card just allows you to just put it on the board. And if your opponent tries to play the game, like I was playing against Dragon yesterday and they summoned Chaotic Ruler, and then you can go ahead and just be like, all right, cool, uh, draw materials and like negate it, right? Amongst everything else that's probably already on your board, right? Which is just insanity. Um, so the cards themselves always have really, really good floatability and a lot of really solid effects. Um, so the thing I want to talk about, though, is the fact that this card is not cost, um, which is really nuts. Um, as we talked about earlier as well, the fact that you can go ahead and send like a beast or a tragedy, um, it's honestly really impactful because not only can you like send Squamata, send Wendy, set beast, and then you get an additional fusion material. Um, you can go ahead and like send your tragedy, add your Luber if you need to. Um, or if you're going to special summon your Luber, you can add your drama turge off of this. Um, and then you can go ahead and have the ability to, um, just have the additional fusion uh, material in your hand with the Dramaturge, and then whatever you summon, you can summon your Dramaturge at the same time, um, and then you have, like, the active negation. If you, like, I've done a play, too, where I, like, I had a Dramaturge on my board and then summon Op Cologne, um, which is really crazy. Um, so if we go back to this, again, if a fusion, synchro, XCs, or link is special summoned, um, it doesn't matter who summons it. So I just summoned like, the op clone and then I did like a double negate on my opponent's board, which is pretty crazy. Um, and there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with this. Um, so again, you can also just go ahead and summon the Aluber and then add that branded fusion, um, which will just go ahead and get your plays rolling. Um, which is another reason why I really like the Brave Engine in this deck, because you can like make the Griffin activate the opening, summon the Aluber, get the fusion, make the fusion happen. Like, there's so many crazy things in this deck that you're just allowed to do for no reason. Uh, let's have a chat. Um, so this card is, again, just easily one of the most broken things I've ever seen. Um, we're going to be talking about in the next couple slides, um, that'll be kind of trickled in there, here and there, about the kinds of things that you can do with this. Um, but what's so crazy about this is that there's a card that you summon off the brand of Fusion card uh, called the Lubellion. Um, Lubellion allows you to discard a card and then Fusion summon using, uh, especially cards from your graveyard, um, or face up Banish, which is crazy, and then shuffle them back in the deck like it's a Thunder Dragon Fusion. Um, what's really cool about that is that it's just insane recyclability of your resources, um, so this deck can grind very well. As you'll see in one of the replays that I have for you today, it was a chain link nine like crazy long game that just was you needed to know how to manage your resources um so i hope that you're excited for that because that was a absolutely absurd replay um but this card is easily one of the most broken things i've seen in Yu-Gi-Oh in a long time um other means of fusion that we talked about um we're gonna be talking about the fact that, that the branded and red can be used for more than just a like a fusion summon on your turn um there are offensive cards that you can summon on your opponent um which can be very good for this deck and kind of allows you the ability to similar to adam Spader, where they go like hulk into quandex and go into satellite warrior we have a similar play in this deck and then again just maintaining your theater is really solid the fact that it's a field spell if you ever got into a format where it's very combo based you can then run like the set rotation the mystic mind um which i really enjoy having a fusion uh field spell because for me just having a field spell in the deck always means that like you just don't really have to run like many of it especially with searchable um and the fact that you can just run other cards like set rotation if you ever want to like clash another engine and um i really do like that personally um but the next thing i want to talk about is ways to recur the branded fusion so what happens when you go your first turn you set up an insane board and then your opponent cracks it but like you're not dead they might have like a negation right 
Uh, what's really cool is that you can use the Albion Dragon when it gets sent to the grave because it was sent there this turn. You can then go ahead and either add Branded Fusion from your deck to your hand or you can set it. And this goes for any of the Branded spells, I believe, or traps um, of the Albion. In the end phase, you can just go ahead and add one or set one. Uh, so you can go ahead and just get the Branded Fusion for the follow-up play, which is just absurd. The other thing, too, is that you can go ahead and banish the tragedy on your turn from the graveyard and then go ahead and reset the branded fusion. So you're always going to have access to your fusion on the follow-up play, which makes this card that much more deadly. Um, going into my next point here is that there is a crazy play that you can do with the branded in red. So what you can do is you can go Albion Dragon and then you can send the Albion Dragon to the graveyard, whether it be a fusion or what have you. Um, and then in the end phase, you set Branded in red, and then you're going to be allowed to go ahead on your opponent's turn and then use Branded in red to summon the Guardian Chimera. If you're unfamiliar with what Guardian Chimera is, you can use minimum from each location, your hand or your field, to fusion summon, and you need three monsters with different names. For every material that you use from your hand, you can draw cards to replace those cards. For every material that you use from the field, you can pop that many cards your opponent controls. So what's really cool about this is it's a minimum one from each location. So you can either destroy two and draw one, or you can draw two and destroy one. Um, so this is crazy interruption on your opponent's turn. Um, especially if things are going really south, they dropleted your board, and you're like, well, that sucks, like, you know, my board's gone. You still have Chimera, and this thing is not small. It's 33-33. It's pretty big to get over. If you have poly, like, original polymerization in your graveyard, then it can be targeted, but that's almost never relevant because you're not just, like, playing the poly unless you're doing, like, the patchwork engine, um, which I don't really recommend, but, like, if it works, it works. Um, but if you do have regular poly in your grave, then you are allowed to go ahead and use the, all right, have the, um, effect on the card that says it can't be targeted. Uh, but this is a crazy interaction in the deck that you should be aware of. Um, I really love Nadir Servant. I feel like Nadir Servant is 110% a staple in this deck. Um, I really don't think that Servant will get hit. I don't think that it's the problem. Um, but we'll see. Uh, so having Servant is really solid here because you add Fallen of Albaz and then you don't even need to have Albaz in your hand. It's honestly like the worst card in the deck, but like you need it for um, fusioning. Um, so what's really cool is you can activate Servant and just add the Albaz and just pitch it for op clone effect and just get to your schism. Um, and then if you have like Lubellion that you summon, you can just go ahead and shuffle back your Albaz um, to use it again for more summons, especially if you have like a branded uh, fusion again. Uh, so I really do like the fact that you can just kind of like send it for free and like recycle it anyway. Um, yeah, so the next thing we're going to be talking about is the easy Dragoon line here. You activate Branded Fusion. You send Fallen of Albaz and the Light Hex Sealed Fusion from your deck to the graveyard. And then you're allowed to then go ahead and use your Albion effect um, on Summon to Fusion Summon. And uh, what's really cool about this is you can just, you can either like use this because it's a dragon and like the Light Hex, or you can just go ahead and use the Albion Dragon to banish both of these and then Summon Dragoon, um, which is really insane. Uh, because then you're going to have the Albion and the Dragoon on field, um, and then you have, like, all of your other extenders in hand or whatever else you're going to do. Um, but it's, like, it's such a clean way to open your combo, because it's a two-summon Dragoon, so, like, Nibiru never mattered. Um, especially if you open Branded, uh, like the Fusion, um, and then you go into your Dragoon, Droll never mattered. So that's why I really, really like this card in this line of play. Um, and the fact that you can just go ahead and just dump Dragoon on the board. We all know Dragoon's very strong in the, uh, the game currently. Uh, so, again, when I was talking about, like, things that could potentially be hit in this deck, I have a list without Dragoon, um, just in case. Uh, but I think this is a really cool thing the deck has going for it. But before we start talking about what the lists look like, let's go ahead and talk about the replays. So to start things off, we're going to be playing against Invoke Dogmatico with the Schism there. So we're probably assuming that he's not playing the Doll cards. A lot of people just play the one of Schism, which is pretty common. Um, so we're going to see what he can do here turn one. We did open the Droplet, so I feel very safe, especially against Dogmatica cards when they summon Maximus and I have Notis in my extra deck. Um, it's always a very fun time, right? 
Uh, so we're going to see that Maximus come down here. We're going to chain block them to Tiss and pop the Makaba, um, which is always super strong here. Um, we're going to see what he can do. He's going to do the Ecclesia, add the Flare. So this is fine. He's going to have a win to play here and a Flare Negate, which, I mean, okay, we have Droplet. It's fine. Uh, Branded Fusion is going to be really insane here because we can send Dragon and then it can bait the back row. Um, the other thing too is Lubian here can recycle cards from a face of Banish or my graveyard to fusion summon again. Um, so just a lot of very plus here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to bait out the Schism, summon out the Winda. That's fine. Go ahead, summon the Mirror Jade. Mirror Jade's effect non targeting banishes a card in the field. Quick effect. As long as you send a Fallen of Albez card from your extra deck to the graveyard, uh, which is super strong. Um, then we're going to be sending the Albion Dragon, which is equally insane here. Um, Again, if this card is in the grave because it was sent there this turn, uh, you can add to your hand or set one Branded Flare Trap. So again, being able to recur the Branded Fusion for the follow-up is insanity here. Um, very, very good. Um, he's going to chain the Flare in hand. I'm going to chain Droplet to get this thing off field so we can make sure that the window gets banished here, uh, which is equally just a very solid play. Uh, I'm going to go ahead here and get rid of that. Go normal summon a Luber, get the branded opening, pitch off the beast here to summon out the Dramaturge, uh, get the draw as well. Going to go for the Gold Sark play for the tragedy. I don't play this card anymore. This was just in here for testing. The uh, I think it's the Libium. I could be wrong. Uh, Libitum. So we're going to be sending the Construct here to add back the Schism. Uh, I'm going to go ahead here and get my branded fusion as well. Uh, we cleared off his Ecclesia too. Uh, chaining the Schism to his Alistair. Um, he's going to go ahead here and uh, try to resolve this Invocation, negate the Maximus. The Algoids comes down, the Dramaturge negates. Um, he doesn't know that you can't like kill this by battle. Um, so that goes, we're going to go ahead and see the Natis come down. What's really cool here is when the uh, Opclone dies, we're going to see a couple really nice interactions here. One is the Aluber is just going to summon back to the field. Um, the Opclone is going to go ahead and add the Wendy. The Wendy is going to then trigger and then go ahead and set the aerial from the deck. Um, so we have a lot of floatability in this deck, as you can see. Um, getting monsters to fuse with really isn't hard to do. Um, so we're going to go ahead here and see what he can do um, in response. Going to go ahead and make the play for Dragoon here. Going to go ahead and send that light in the Fallen of Albaz. Go ahead here and use the effect to summon out the Dragoon. Um, and Dragoon will negate that. Go ahead and summon back the Dragon here. Use the Schism to summon out a Winda. He's going to use the Punishment, but I'll banish the Branded Opening, and that would be GG right there. So this matchup is pretty quick. I wanted to show exactly what the deck can do um, as far as setting up a pretty wild turn one board um, off of not even that much, right? Like we opened three hard bricks in the deck that aren't even that bricky, honestly, when you had the fusion spell or like a branded opening. But like just off the one Aluber effect alone, let me just show you how far you can really get with cards like this in your hand. Um, so this is against Sword Soul. Droll really doesn't matter because as long as you're adding the branded fusion, it's over it before it starts. Um, you go ahead and use the Albion Dragon here, summon the Dragoon, use the Branded Theater, make the Masquerade, and set the Schism. So, not only do they burn for 600 life every time they try to activate anything, the Dragoon will also be just a insane negate on the board, and then they'll also have to fight through a window while they're burning through each activation and effect. It's just so nuts. Like, this kind of a board just, like, isn't fair. So they activate the Vishuda, I'm going to chain the Winda uh, to summon, and then, uh, yeah, that one's pretty fast. We wanted to see what it could do against the PK Brave DPE deck, so here it is. Uh, we're going to be going off pretty hard here with the Branded Fusion, go into our Dragoon play to make sure that we don't get, like, Nibiru'd or anything crazy right, um, go into our Masquerade play, we're going to have the Jester to get into our Branded in red, go ahead and get our Opclone, add that Albaz and just pitch the Albaz to get to that uh, Shadal Schism, uh, which is so crazy because then we get to have the Branded Fusion for follow-up, we have a Servant for follow-up, we have the Window, we have the Guardian Chimera play, there's so many things that we have access to right now. So we're going to see what he can do here. Starting off with the tier scale, sending the cloak, um, going into his Cherubini here. It looks like pretty standard combo for the most part. Uh, going to go ahead here and try to crack our board. Sending out that Aquamancer 2, which is very, very strong. Um, we haven't interacted with him until this schism, and he's already at 4,400 life. The ability to just have a masquerade on a board full of negates and interactions is insanity because it doesn't really matter what you do, right? Like, it's just chilling there and like they just burn very, very fast. So that's why I really love masquerade. Um, cards insane. 
Um, not only two, let's actually talk about this card for a second. When you control the Choosing Summon card, your opponent must pay 600 life to activate cards or effects. If your opponent controls a Ritual Fusion Synchro Exceeds or Link while this card is in your graveyard, quick effect you can special summon this card but banish it when it leaves the field. Now, notice that when you summon it back, it is not considered Fusion Summon, so it won't get the burn effect. But this card also floats, which is really cool. All right, so we're gonna go ahead here and negate the called by to go ahead and summon the window. This was actually a misclick. This should have been an attack mode. Um, we talked about that though, because I was playing against someone from my stream. Um, so this was something that should have been an attack mode, but I mean, it doesn't really matter here. The uh, the board state is way too oppressive here, um, but this is just what the deck does, right? It, it's insane. He's at 3,800. He doesn't really have too much left. Even if he summons DPE, I have the Dragoon. Um, there's really not a whole lot that he can do. And if he tries to go end phase and set a bunch of things, I can go ahead and rip the Guardian Chimera. Um, and it's just, it's so crazy, honestly, what this deck can really do. But let's go into the last replay that's honestly ridiculous. Now, it's been a while since I've been in a genuine grind, and this game is everything a grind should be. So to start things off here, we're going to be seeing the Lopter hit the board, summoning out the uh, Boss of Storms, going for the Monstrosity, summoning out the Mardell, the Chiras. Um, lots of cool things going off here. He has the Jorman Gunder. Uh, both going to draw a card, attach one to it, summon out the Mardell. Go ahead for the Nine Lives Cat, which says that anything reborn from the grave can be targeted, um, which is pretty cool. And then you can go ahead and um, special summon monsters from the grave too um, on his turn. So there's a lot of really nice interaction he has going on here. He has a trap card that says each player draws a card. It's kind of like a Gossip Shadow effect, but it's only in response to generator card effects. Um, so it's not really that relevant. Um, I'm going to go ahead here and use the boss stage to summon out the rest of the tokens here. I'm going to start off with the branded opening, sending out the Squamata, get the Dramaturge on board. Um, he's going to go ahead and send out the Tiras to pop a card. Um, I'm still going to be able to send the uh, the Wendy here. Um, he's going to use the Jorman Gunder's effect to make us draw again. Going to go ahead here and set the Beast, uh, which is perfectly fine. Uh, I believe I attached another, yeah, another branded opening to this. Um, sending out the Dragon, I want to be able to like bait the trap. I know hitting the field spell is relevant here, but baiting the trap is much better, so I can actually make sure my uh, effects go through. Going to go here and opt to get to the Winda, uh, just in case, because there is a lot of things going on on the board right now. Um, I didn't chain it to this because like I didn't want him to like just be able to run over my uh, window anyway. Uh, so I just kind of left it until he already had summoned. I'm uh, going to go ahead and flip summon the beast here. Going to go into a lot of cards. The Aluber getting into my theater. Uh, theater going to hit the board now and use that for the Masquerade. I did clear my own window, but I also needed to be able to play the game here. So it was kind of a big risk, uh, but I think that it was correct in the long run. Ripping the branded fusion now, trying to get to my uh, Lubellion. Um, he's going to go ahead and chain a lot here. He now has the Boss of Doom. Go ahead and get the Mirror Jade here. Um, he's going to go Chain Link 3. This is crazy. This ends up being a Chain Link 9. Chain Mirror Jade. Chain Boss of Doom. Chain Called By. Chain, uh, what is it? Boss of Delusion. Um, like, there's so much going on here. Chain Branded in Red. Chain Jar of Avarice. Like, Chain Link 9. It was nuts. Uh, summon the Guardian Chimera. I had to banish my own Mirror Jade because there's nothing else on the board that I could banish, which was super unfortunate after everything happened. Um, resolve my Dramaturge. Resolve my Chimera. Um, go ahead and Ash that. Attack over. I could have attacked over both of the tokens and put him to a lethal zone for like a Masquerade, but I wanted to clear off the Tiras immediately because I didn't want to give him like extra materials, right? Um, his next turn is actually kind of insane. He gets a lot of ways to draw, and I'm surprised he didn't draw anything to like that relevant. Um, but it is Generators, but I don't know, like the matchup was a crazy grind, right? Um, so he's going to be able to get to quite a bit here. Slash drawing into another uh, Pot of Avarice, which is kind of funny. Um, go ahead and draw another two cards, like Call by Monstrosity, like this man drew a lot. Um, I top decked the Droplet. Now this is actually a very big technical play thing here that I had to do, and I had to think about this one for a minute. Um, this doesn't get to show in real time how long it took for me to do this, but it took me a minute to actually decide. So I sent the uh, Turge, the Schism, and the Theater. You kind of wanted to send like the Aluber there, but you wanted a discard for the Lubellion, um, and you'll see why that's relevant here in a minute. Um, so I ripped the Brandon and Red Lubellion effect here, pitching that Aluber, going ahead and summoning out the Albion here now. Albion going ahead and summoning the Mirror Jade. 
Um, getting into another uh, chain link four here. Uh, banishing one, and then I can go ahead and attack over everything. So you had to really think about that for a minute and like what you wanted to do and what your line of play was. Um, but definitely keeping a monster in hand was the call there, even though I had to get rid of three to negate the board. Because um, they all can still do things. They can like tribute each other too. Um, so that was a clean win, but that was a very long grind game, let me tell you. So the next thing that we're going to be talking about here is going to be the ratios. What would change if a banlist drop tomorrow and what I would change in the list in general moving forward. One thing that I do want to point out is that I would probably start playing cross out maybe in place of a Valor upstart in the call by um, just because if you branded fusion resolves you gain so much card advantage off that one activation that it's so important to make sure that goes through. You have 10 ways to open up your branded fusion between your three Aluber, your three branded, your three opening, your one gold shark to banish the tragedy to add the Aluber so essentially being a fourth Aluber um, which is so important here. Um, making sure that that one card resolves honestly gets you so far into the game state, it's not even funny. Um, if a ban list drop tomorrow, I'll be showing you guys the list after this, which will basically take out Dragoon and Winda, just in case one or both get banned, um, because they are in talks, and the structure deck doesn't drop till March or April, so this will be, uh, a list or two in between now and then, um, so just to kind of keep that in mind and make sure that we, uh, we're keeping the list as updated as possible moving into future formats. Um, so one thing too, if you're newer to a deck like this, is that your uh, Shadal cards won't trigger if you send them off of a droplet, because um, that is sending for cost, so that's something really important to point out. Um, two cards that didn't really get mentioned in the video were Fallen of Albaz and Kit. Kit, it's really cool if you control a monster that lists Fallen of Albaz on your field, or if you have one in your graveyard, you can special summon this card from your hand, and then add a Branded Spoiler Trap from your Banished Zone, your Grave, or your deck to your hand. So anywhere and then you have to return a card from your hand to the bottom of your deck very very good extender and also another way to get into your branded fusion um so essentially essentially would be like 11 ways to the fusion but i wouldn't consider this like a good early game card this is definitely like a late game scenario card um, especially being the additional extender and plus you already need to control a fusion um so it's very situational but i feel like it's just a very good extender in general to have in this deck Another thing too is I am playing the one Hex for the Dragoon. Um, I feel like it's just really cool here to have. Not playing DPE because I don't really want to play Bricks in a deck that just needs a bunch of gas, right? It's kind of like Pendulum. Like you need as many gas cards as possible. Um, I don't really want to run more Bricks over engine pieces. Um, I'm also running six Shadal cards, including the Schism. Um, I don't really see these as Bricks ever. They always come in really handy, especially being on the Ghost Kumata, Wendy, Set Beast, get a draw and a body. Um, very, very good in general here. Uh, so overall, the deck has been working out very well. Um, again, the last thing I want to mention, though, is that Fallen of Albaz, and that's being that if you normal or special summon this card, you can discard one and then super poly with the monster your opponent controls and itself. Um, you can respond to it, but it's still really nice spot removal um, if you've already like started playing through negation, right? Um, and you need to start clearing things off the board. Um, and also being able to get into more of your own engine, which is super nice. Um, so the next thing that I want to bring up here is going to be if Winda and Dragoon were banned tomorrow, what would we change? Um, and that's going to be playing Super Poly in the main because all the extract monsters for the most part have a very like Super Poly-esque effect where you would see it in like Heroes 2 where you just like need an attribute, right? Um, which is super cool and then we can actually start playing the, um, extra deck monsters like Starving Venom and Dragless Topelia. Um, which I also really like Dragos to Pelia. Um, shout outs to Ari in my Discord for telling me too um, that in the OCG they play Dragos to Pelia because the mirror is so common that this is just a way to really break the board, um, which is really cool because Dragos to Pelia is still really relevant and being a really good negation. Um, so I really like this card in general too. You don't really have to play the double chimera, but like the extra deck is so loose right now um, when you play a build like this that it doesn't really matter. Um, so I really like this in general. Um, this could honestly be the other um, Despia Fusion. It's the one that starts with a Q, uh, which is fine too. I just have never really seen that card become relevant. It makes everything zero. Um, it's pretty good, but like again, in testing, it just never really came up for me at all. Um, main decking the Super Poly though is definitely really cool because you lose out on like the Winda and the Dragoon play here, but you also just have very simple interactions, right? Like you go Bray token, summon Griffin, so you have an Omni. You summon your Masquerade, so they're burning to death every single time they try to activate anything. And then you summon your Mirror Jade, so you have a 
non-targeting banish quick effect so like that's a lot to play through and then also having like a set super poly behind that is insane um, because it just applies so much pressure to your opponent um, still playing the ashes the veilers the droplets here and just being able to set up a much better board in my opinion um to you have like the early negation um to at least protect your opening as well because you can go like the griffin opening some of luber get your branded fusion go off from there um so i think this is very strong in general um the brave token just adds so much to the deck and there will be other variants i know that there's like an invoked variant too in the ocg as well right now um but again with the ban list we never know what's going to happen um between now and then because it's literally going to be like two ban lists be, uh in that time period uh so we'll see but overall the deck's been testing out really well and i'm very excited to see what's more to come with this deck moving forward um again if you were not already in my discord feel free to join the family uh, so many people in there already and it's just a big testing circle and i really do love that because walking in there there's always just a lot of theory going on and that's something that i really do appreciate i'm also live on twitch very often so if you want to go check that out go ahead and check my link in the description below if not already on my twitter feel free to stay updated um, and then again if you do need a coaching session i do coach over on medify feel free to pm me on discord if you do need a time slot to really go on a one-on-one -on -one session um, which i feel like is always very very helpful um, just because you get a lot of insight that you wouldn't get otherwise but i do hope that you all enjoyed the video if you're not already subscribed again we are giving away the striker core at 8k so feel free to go ahead and do that too and i hope that everyone has a wonderful day and i'll catch you all in the next video thank you all very much